Welcome or welcome back to the Lockwood Chronicles. My name is Larissa and today we have our November TBR. <laughs> Sounded like TBR. TBR. I did not enunciate the B. To the B, into the B. Mmm, pumpkin chai. Also my spoon says drink tea, read books, be happy, and I love it so much. That's all I want to do is drink tea, read books, and be happy. Let's get to it. Seven books on this month's TBR. We'll see if I get to them. I'm, I'm excited. This is going to be, if I get to all of them, it's going to be a good month. Jaws clicking. It clicks when I'm like filming a video. Let's just like go ahead and get the really, really exciting one out of the way. I do not currently have it in my possession because it is being released this month and that is going to be Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros and that is the second book in the Fourth Wing series and if you have not read or heard of Fourth Wing I guess you just like took a break off of social media. Like I said Iron Flame is the second book after Fourth Wing and Fourth Wing is about Violet who is in Dragon Rider school even though she wanted to be a scribe and her mom was like no 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 you gotta follow up the family tradition and be a dragon rider. And she's like, girl, I will die. A bunch of stuff happens. It's kind of like an enemies to lovers. It's it's a very quick fantasy. Like it does not take long to get into it. There's not super amount of world building. Like there is some, but it's very digestible. I thought ate up every second of this book and there was a lot of twists and turns that I was living for. And I am so excited to get to Iron Flame. Probably will do a vlog on it. Not a spoiler. None of my reading vlogs have spoilers in them unless I say it has spoilers in it. So rest assured, none of my reading vlogs have spoilers in it. Most likely we'll do that for Iron Flame because I just love this series so much. Well, I love this book so much. We'll see if I continue to enjoy the series. They left us off on quite the cliffhanger. I need answers. However, it's supposed to be a five book series, which I don't know how that's gonna go. I would think it would be a good trilogy or even a quartet. I miss trilogies, you guys. I miss them so much. It's like such low commitment. Well, let's just continue on with fantasy, shall we? I know I said I was gonna read this months and months ago, but then I decided to hold off because the third book is gonna be coming out in January. And if you are up to date, you would know that would be Crescent City, Crescent City by Sarah J Maas. I can't enunciate today. And this is House of Earth and Blood, the first one in the series. And honestly, I am astounded at how well I have been able to keep out of anything about this. I know nothing, absolutely nothing about this series at all. The person, their name is Bryce. No clue until this very moment. I've heard this one is pretty complicated. Like it's just a lot. So I might have to watch a few of like uh, videos or whatever to actually know what's happening. Cause I know a lot of people do get confused with this series. Like it's just very much more in depth than her previous series. I feel like Akatar, which lives run free in my head, I is taking everything in my being not to just stop what I'm doing and read like Akatar again. I felt like this was a really good beginner one to get into. It's very easy to grasp. It's a romance heavy fantasy. Throne of Glass is definitely more fantasy with a little bit of romance. And I feel like this one is even more in depth fantasy from what I've kind of gathered. Again, I try very hard to not know anything about this series. I don't want any spoilers, none whatsoever. So do not tell me, do not comment below anything about it. I don't want to know. Let's continue on with some series. We're going to be reading the last of like the Daisy Hates, or the books that are out of the Magnolia Parks universe. And that is Daisy Hates the Great Undoing. This is the book this cover is the cover that made me want to get the original covers because I absolutely love this cover. I love a bust. <laughs> and that's the reason I got the other ones in the series as the original covers because of this one, the fourth one in the Magnolia Parks series. And this is in regards to Daisy and her perspective. And we got that in the second book, which is just Daisy Hates. Rich people drama. Daisy is her brother's part of the mob or like is the, the mob the big guy, the big guns, and her relationships and very much drama, not much plot, lots of vibes. <laughs> it's very much like Gossip Girl-esque London society. Things We Left Behind by Lucy Score. This is the third book in the Knock em Out series. This is about Lucian and Sloane. I've been very nervous and hesitant to pick this up because I have heard that it's a struggle until the very end. Lucian and Sloane as characters in the other two books were just so entertaining and fascinating because you really want to know what has happened to them because it's very much like enemies to lovers and like, there's this huge feud between them. 
and from what I've heard, it doesn't deliver. I kind of need to go in with low expectations. Lucy Score's writing is very easy to get into. However, in the last two books, a lot of repetition, a lot of recycling plot, and it definitely could be half the amount if there wasn't that much repetition. It's the other thing that's been keeping me from reading this book, because I know she's a very repetitive author. It's she's a very great author. Obviously, she has so many books out. So there's that. But this is the third and final book in the Knock Em Out series, and I've heard that the ending is very, very good and makes it worth it. And we also get peeks into the other two couples. I think it primarily focuses on the other two couples or something. I don't know. I'm very confused, but excited to finish the series. Oh, okay, this one is very exciting. I need to take this sticker off too. It is driving me nuts, but that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. No reason as to why I haven't picked this up yet. I, well, I like to wait till the winter fall vibes because I just feel like it's a winter fall vibe book. It's the dark cover. And this is about Addie and she has made a deal with the devil that she will not die and live forever. However, turn of that, the spin of that is nobody will remember meeting her. So she'll go through life without anybody remembering her. And then somebody does remember her and she's shocked. Yeah, I'm excited to see what I think. I know so many people love this book. I know some people were very underwhelmed with this book as well. I, I am very pumped to finally read this. It's a little bit heftier. The last two books that I am planning on reading, I'm going to read on my Kindle because I do have Kindle Unlimited. I am keeping it. I love it, but I also want to make sure that I'm utilizing it. And I love reading on my Kindle. I just, like, I love a physical book, but reading on my Kindle, ooh, so convenient, easy. The Night, or just Night Shift by Annie Crown. Ever since Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey, sports romance, give them to me now. I need them now. And then reading Wildfire, even though there was not really any sports involved in that. He was just a hockey player, but it was summer. I don't care. I want a sports romance. I want anybody that plays a sport and there to be romance. And this one caught my eye as it says, the bookworm and the basketball player are about to meet their match. I don't know anything about basketball. Uh, basketball has never been my sport. I, it's the only sport I cannot play. Kendall Holiday spends her Friday nights exactly where she wants to be, with her head buried in a spicy romance novel while she works the graveyard shift at her university's library. That sounds amazing. She knows she could join her friends for a weekend of drunken debauchery and college parties, but she likes her alone time, so she tells herself she isn't hiding when she gets lost in the pages of fictional love stories. But that all changes when Vincent Knight, captain of the basketball team, turns up with an injured wrist, a sour mood, and a pressing need for poetry recommendations for class he hates. Vincent is tall, smart mouth, and challenges Kendall like no one has before. Suddenly she's falling headfirst into her very own romance novel. <laughs> but it takes a lot more truth than tropes to get a happy ever after in real life. It sounds so cheesy and so fun, and I love a college sports romance because that's what I wished I would have had in college. <sighs> Alas, that was not, that was not me. It's a spi sweet and spicy single POV. Oh, bummer. I want a dual POV. Anyway, it's fine. Single POV college romance, perfect for fans of Emily Henry, Hannah Grace, and Elena Arm Arm Armas. Elena Armas. I haven't read anything by Elena, but maybe I will put that on there. But <laughs> Emily Henry and Hannah Grace, you got me. I'm here for it. And then the next one is How to Fake Date a Vampire by Lindsay Hall. This is the second in the Charming Cove independent standalone series, whatever. And I just really enjoyed her series and her third book just came out. And I really, really enjoyed the first one a lot more than I thought. So I figured I would just continue on with the series. Faking it with a vampire duke should be easy, right? I've got one chance to prove to my coven that I'm worth my wand, but to do it, I'm going to have to make a deal with a vampire duke. I get to use his gorgeous estate in Cornwall to host the Beltane Ball and in exchange I'll pretend to be his girlfriend. But it's all a show for his grandmother. The rules of our fake relationship are simple. No flirting, no emotion, no sex. Easy, right? Except I can't seem to ignore the allure of the infuriatingly and devastatingly sexy vampire. Falling for a duke isn't an option though. I would lose the an an I can read, I promise. I would lose the anonymity that protects me in my coven and that would ruin my life and the lives of other witches in my coven. So yeah, totally easy. Again, I was very pleasantly surprised about the Modern Girl's Guide to Magic. That was, I highly enjoyed that book. And that is going to conclude my TBR for November. We got seven books and then, you know, five of them 
are here in my arms. Oh, jeez. Well, actually, yeah, pretend that's Iron Flame. <laughs> and then it'll almost be real. Well, with that being said, respect others, respect yourself, and do something amazing with your day. Thanks, bye. Thank you.